Uh, the story is simple. Uh, my roots are in Africa. I'm from Ghana originally. So having gone to the U.S., had my education, worked for major pharmaceutical companies, and with the, the dream of setting up uh, a similar type of operation uh, in Ghana, it was easy then to make the decision finally to come back. Dr. Paul Lottie and his wife, Dr. Alexandra Graham, studied and worked in the United States for many years. They both held senior positions at well-known pharmaceutical companies, but wanted to invest their skills back in Africa, so they returned home. The, the, the issues are in Africa. Um, when you have such a high disease burden and the problem is availability and affordability of medicines, if you've gone through the training, you have the experience, you've had the exposure to ways in which to make medicines, uh, I think it is important to come back to where the situation actually is because once you are in it, then you realize how dire it is, and you can also identify the right ways in which you can help. So for me, it was very important to come back, establish a pharmaceutical business, establish it with the, the right kind of standards, with the right kind of technologies that could help uh, with the solving of some of the disease burdens that we have. They started the LaGray Chemical Company just north of Ghana's capital city, Accra. Here, they constructed a top-end facility for research and pharmaceutical production. It was specifically designed, built, and operated to meet international standards of uh, good manufacturing practices. Well, the, the one new thing uh, in West Africa is the technology for active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturing. Um, the active pharmaceutical ingredient, that is the actual medicine in, in the preparations that you take. That technology didn't exist before in West Africa. And in fact, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, it's right now only Lagre and a couple of companies in South Africa that have the technology to manufacture pharmaceuticals from beginning to the end. In other words, starting from commodity chemicals, going through the active pharmaceutical ingredients and then the final forms. So we have made a difference. We've not done it on a large scale. We've done it on a very small scale. But we have shown the feasibility that this is possible, that it's possible for us to do this here, it's possible for us to be self-sufficient. That's the important thing. The important thing uh, at LaGre is that we want to be able to go all the way down to drug discovery at some point in time. LaGre currently operates on a small scale, but boldly demonstrates that it is possible to run this kind of enterprise in Africa. They were to face many obstacles along the way. So why did they start the company? Trust me, we've asked ourselves that so many times. Sleepless nights and all, we've asked how crazy could we be. But if we don't do it, who will? Somebody had to take the leap. Somebody has to try and make a difference. And I think uh, it helps that we had uh, grown, our kids were out of the home, empty nesters, so you can afford to now start thinking of other things like what can I do for society? What can I give back to society? No, it wasn't heaven. I mean, it was difficult. Um, there are so many challenges uh, doing business. First of all, uh, in our environment, um, some of the challenges include even utilities, constant supply of electricity. Uh, lights are going on and off all the time, so if you have sensitive equipment, they suffer. Uh, having continuous power to operate and uh, to manufacture is, is also challenging. There we go. And uh, fortunately, we have a backup generator that comes back up immediately, but it's, it's a problem. Can you imagine running a chemical reaction at 150 degrees centigrade and it goes off, the electricity goes off? Dr. Lati and Dr. Graham are determined to make a success of their business, despite the challenges. They have achieved what many Africans abroad hope to accomplish one day themselves. I can tell you by experience that living out there, most of us out there, whenever we talked, we talked about coming back. Uh, there are issues. Sometimes you get caught in the salary trap, <laughs> where leaving um, your high-earning salary, the somewhat comparatively easier way of life 
and coming back to face the challenges uh, become tough. And I believe that that is what keeps most people back there because you start thinking about uh, going back home, starting all over again, facing challenges, uh, things that you, you probably uh, did not anticipate and problems you hear occurring and so on and so forth would then uh, keep you back and you, you may not want to go back. But I, I, I tell you, the majority of the people that I know that I was out there with, for example, all talk about coming back one day uh, to help. There isn't a word like impossible in my dictionary, and so it's a question of perseverance. We know that we will make it happen, and so there was never a question, not till now, of we'll pack this all up and go back to the U.S. now. My viewpoint is that if you, if you are outside and you've learned things that can help if you came back and you apply those things that could help, you should try and come back. Um, granted, it is challenging. But uh, in the final analysis, this is home, and you have to try and make things better. Africa Report, the program that shows you the way to success.